Um, I don't know, dude. Like I honestly, a lot, everyone loved it probably, but me. Really? I, I really disliked to it. Cause the tour was so chaotic. <laughs> it was so chaotic. And like, cause based off the fact too, that of like anxiety and shit, like just being around so many people and then like having to wake up at five, 6 AM, sometimes wouldn't sleep. We'd have to go back on the tour bus. And yeah. then even a couple shows, um, I literally, I remember there's this one show, I forgot, I think it might have been Chicago, that I was so tired that I didn't even get off, like, the tour bus. Like, I just slept the entire time, and mm. I just let my friends help, like, sell the merch and all the shit like that. Because yeah. when you're on tour, it's very much, like, the, the, the craziest, most awake high energy person basically yeah. dictates how everybody else has yeah, to Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, he'd stay up for days and days, and he would probably get maybe like three, four hours of sleep on, on tour, like going to the next city and shit. Right. But other than that, he'd just be up working, talking, like fucking around. Uh -huh. Where <laughs> yeah. were you when he got uh, knocked out on stage? Um, I was there, but I was at the merch table because I was going back and forth each each like show. I would uh -huh. go get him and like ski clothes, and then I'd go bring it to him before. Clothes like going to the like, stores? No, 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 like, like revenge, oh, like merch, because okay. they're like, yo, just give me everything the size, and then I would just go get it. And then um, I was picking up some of the like hoodies and stuff, and then I saw just a bunch of guys just r going to the left side of the the venue right and i was like what the fuck there's like eight people i'm like oh hell no dude like something some shit's fucked up right now yeah and then i was trying to call his um his bodyguard jeremy and all of a sudden i just seen that uh that one dude take off on him i was like fuck dude yeah it's like everybody's just beating the dog shit out of the one guy yeah on stage. <laughs> yeah that was crazy and i was just trying to make sure like i was trying to go over there and see like if everything was okay i saw him fucking on the floor i was like oh like this shit is crazy right now was that insane after that or was it not really that big a deal because it kind of felt like x was just right back to tweeting and being on tour like the next day he he like there is no way he was gonna stop going on tour he was like i'm for sure he's like fuck him like i'm gonna i'm gonna keep pushing through all this shit and right. um like as as you should you know but uh yeah i i think very few people would continue the tour after mm. getting that you know it was crazy because at the same time that that tour was taking place i'm pretty sure it was the same time that the whole situation happened with ski getting jumped yeah. in la yeah it was, which I, I was actually at that show while oh, that, you were at that show. i was at that show i show up and back yeah. and uh all of a sudden i realized like so i show up and back and ski is already like on stage uh -huh. and all of a sudden i realized there's like 20 dudes in back and they're all wearing the same color yeah and they're all not looking too happy and then but so i'm looking at the screen right because yeah. i'm watching ski play and then all of a sudden i see so many motherfuckers run down on them on stage but yeah. i'm in back just watching it play out and i'm like what do we do we like run out by the time we get even close to the stage yeah. everybody is already like completely gone off the stage like they had taken uh, it around back and stuff that was insane yeah that happened i think that was prior uh before us going to that was before us going to san diego oh okay because because yeah. it's yeah because it sparked off like I, I and i always felt like ski in a weird way like held that against x because uh -huh. x sort of aggravated that situation by talking super crazy on social media and ski wasn't necessarily like up for starting a war yeah maybe but at the same time like they had each other's back you know mm. it was gonna be there whether they were both gonna be there um for each other whether they both didn't agree on it or mm. not but that's the thing is that x was so about his friends yeah. that he took that situation further than ski probably would have wanted it to go because yeah. i still remember right after he got jumped maybe like a half hour later i i thought i gotta call x i yeah. call x and told him on facetime and he just immediately starts shaking yeah he couldn't I, even speak he yeah. couldn't say anything to me he's just shaking yeah i remember um i was there when i was there with them at the um at x's apartment when ski got jumped right over here in la and yeah it was crazy i remember him just fucking yelling and he i think he might have like broke a finger or something like punching the door so hard whoa and we thought he was gonna do some crazy shit so we were all just telling him like don't go outside like just chill 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 and everyone he was, was telling me like i'm gonna hop on a plane to la and then like <laughs> his girl at the time or whatever is all hitting me up and she's like adam you have to help me make sure he doesn't go to la <laughs> yeah, like, like no he's gonna violate going, his probation yeah. he's gonna yeah. be in so much more trouble if he goes to la i'm like how am i gonna stop him from getting on a plane from la yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a bunch of um a bunch of good people around him too like mm. um 
um, like Will and Wilgens. I don't know if you uh, know him, but like Wilgens, uh, Wilgens helped. I think he's an audio engineer. Uh -huh. He engineered a lot of his songs and like I think Young Brats and right. um, R.P. Roach and shit like that. And then um, Will was actually his like first manager. Mm. Yeah, and they were both. They helped. Like when I was over there staying um, staying in Florida, they really helped me like get through like some tough shit like I was dealing with personally as well like because I didn't fully want to like be there I guess because every day I was just like still with battling anxiety and fucking like not knowing what I'm gonna do next and mm. and shit like that and they really helped me and they were really there for X as well so um yeah like they they made sure like he was straight like he's not gonna do anything stupid like he's gonna you know, just calm down and think about it tomorrow and shit like that yeah. right he like they both brought him back to being like level-headed and shit well that's nice um okay so that but that tour ends early because basically it was just so chaotic that nobody yeah. could handle it right mm -hmm. what do you do you go back to florida or you go back home uh go back to florida okay go back to florida for a month and um just working over there and just really trying to like I said, see what the fuck is next because no one had a blueprint or no one had like a solid foundation besides like X to mm -hmm. what they're going to do, you know? And um, it was just kind of getting to know myself more. Like, what do I really want to do? What do I really want to make with revenge and the brand and shit like that? Mm. And I took a lot of time to myself over there and um, some shit happened, some like personal shit I was going through as well happened over here and um, I had to come back and uh, get myself right. Okay, so you had to leave at some point? Was yeah. this before or after uh, the, the Jocelyn Flores situation? Um, this was after. Jocelyn happened maybe I think, I, it might have been before tour. How did you know her? Or is there like a connection I, with that whole thing? I, I didn't know her, um, but like I forgot, I forgot how, I, we actually met or I don't know she was just there at the house one day and um yeah I I don't know just talking about it is just it's crazy to me still because um you didn't you only knew her for a few days before she passed or? yeah it was maybe I think maybe I met her like once okay yeah but I would just I wouldn't really talk to anyone <laughs> besides like people I knew right you know um, so I'd just be busy by myself, like ducked off somewhere anyway. Cause that shit was crazy for me because like another person in the rap world or whatever kind of like hit me up. I didn't know mm -hmm. who she was or anything, but they yeah. hit me up like, oh, like this girl I know like flew out there to hang out with X. Yeah. And I'm, I was like, oh, whatever. And then a couple of days later, X tells me like, oh, this girl I was really close with passed. Or, yeah. And I'm like, oh, it was that girl that somebody just was telling me about. And like, yeah, I don't know. It's just. I, I've always thought that was just such a crazy fucking situation. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, I remember X just, I didn't even fully, like, know her. But when I heard the news, like, I, I was, like, crying, dude. I was like, what the fuck? Like, how can she, like, take her own life, you know? Right. Because you, you hear about, like, suicide and shit like that. And you, if you have, like, friends or family who have been through that, who have done it and shit, like, it affects you. Even just me knowing her for a day mm. you know or two days like it affected me a lot too like i i really care about people too and i like there's a a lot of things that could have just helped her just if maybe someone would talk to her if i could have reached out more like maybe it would just make her feel better just not do that you know mm. but so the the song garrett's revenge that's what it says in the description of the song yeah it says i love you garrett rest in peace jocelyn i will have my revenge upon the world yeah. So what, what what's the connection there that he felt the need to start out with I love you Garrett in the description of the song? I actually don't know. I never it's I just never, off the top I, never of his head. I never <laughs> fully, I never asked him like he just he called me one day. He was like, "Yo, like listen to this." And at the time I would always play um a lot of Nirvana and just like watch a bunch of uh Kurt Cobain or in interviews and shit like that. Uh -huh. And I would show him and I think too based off the fact that I was so into that at that time 
um the beat was more so like grungy and kind of slow and shit like that uh -huh. so he might have just made a connection with like the beat and then just like what i was into maybe. right yeah I don't, I don't know i've never asked him do you know why he changed it from garrett's revenge to just revenge did that happen after you guys sort of started having issues or did that happen before um it was before okay. it was before yeah he told me he's like i'm gonna name it revenge he's like uh because we talked about it and and I didn't even know he was naming the first one Garrett's Revenge until he put it out and shit like that. Right. Um, but yeah, he wanted to f help like promote the brand and stuff rather than like myself, you know, mm. like at me as a person. He's like, I want to like focus on the brand. I was like, yeah, that shit's fire. Like, I don't care about anything that has to do with me. Like, just go straight for the brand. Did you guys ever have conversations about the brand though did he feel like he of deserved course. to be part owner of the brand or something along those lines um yeah but at the same time i told him was like dude like we have to expand like i have to work by myself too and as much as i love working with you like i didn't want it to look i didn't want people to look at it as merch mm. and i felt like if we were going to continue just doing everything together 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 that it's in a turn into that and like a lot of people do that yo if you enjoyed this clip watch a full interview on no jumper youtube